Hey, welcome to Old Ass Movie Reviews, and today we are continuing uh, Black Exploitation Month with Rudy Ray Moore again. <laughs> again. I love Rudy Ray Moore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tonight, today, today's feature was Petey Wheatstraw, The Devil's Son-in-Law. And we also have a special guest, David Carroll's joining us. Um, David and I going? met on a movie set about a year and a half ago ago up in uh, northern alabama and uh he's also one of our biggest uh listeners so very thank cool. you very much How's it's, going, David? it's a good show i'm All doing right. pretty good I, I wouldn't have watched half the movies that you guys reviewed without your podcast I, i'm surprised you want to come on here after you've watched half the movies we watched <laughs> I have more of the uh, ones you said not to watch. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs> but but we knew, now have a new fan of Greece. <laughs> oh, yeah? yeah? I've bought it for years. And because you said it was so great, I, I gave it a shot. I, I liked it. I'm not a big musical guy, but I liked it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I dig that movie. Uh, there's a lot to like about it. Um, the 30-year-old teenagers is like the hardest thing to go by. Yeah. <laughs> but as soon as you get past that, you're 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 good, you know. <laughs> uh, well, let's get started with PD Wheatstraw, another Rudy Ray Moore feature. Um, and we'll just start with you, David, our special guest. What were your uh, initial thoughts of this movie? It was pretty funny, and I think the kung fu got just a little bit better than <laughs> Dolomite. You actually look yeah, like right? that. Hit each other, right? <laughs> just a tad. <laughs> yeah, just it, it. If you watch Dolomite, there's nowhere near making contact. But at least they look like they're hitting each other in this one a little bit. Yeah, progress. Yeah. I think the kids had the best uh, karate fight scene. The kids in the alley when they yeah. Were oh, yeah. little PD reached out. I yeah. think that was like the best fight choreography. Yeah, they just went movie. at it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they just went at it. I, I do. I do like how this movie starts off. You know instantly it's a comedy. Yeah. You have the sheriff from uh, the Human Tornado as the I doctor. Wrote, I wrote that down. I have a list. <laughs> I made it, I made and <laughs> Petey's mom is obviously very pregnant. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> how long did you gestate, woman? Uh, about seven years. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. yeah, he had to be seven or ten at least, man. He just, then he had and he had diapers on when he came out. Yeah. <laughs> And an attitude. <laughs> yeah, he's going to beat the crap out of the doctor and mama. Or oh, my daddy. God, that was funny. <laughs> yeah, that pretty much set it up to let us know what we were about to see. Um, <laughs> it was a comedy, and um, I'm just going to get this out of the way. Out of the three Rudy Ray Moore films that I've seen, this is my favorite. I really enjoyed this. Yeah, I can see that. I can it's see a that. fun one. Um, yeah. I, I think they did a lot better comedy writing than they did on uh, Human Tornado. Oh, my sure. God, yes. For sure. Um, I, I I don't know who – was it a different writer this time? I wasn't paying enough I, attention. I saw the writer's name, but I didn't realize – I, I think the, the same writer may have done the Tornado. I thought I had wrote it down, yeah. but <laughs> not the same guy that did Dolomite. Right, right okay, okay. And this there was one, a director-writer on this one, maybe? I don't. Yeah, there there may have been a couple of people doing doing stuff yeah. on this one. This um, was, well, I know the the guy that does the music did all of them. Uh, Nate Dave did all the music for all yeah. of okay. all his Rudy Ray Moore stuff. And that's good funk. I mean, when you listen yeah. to the yeah. soundtrack, if you were just listening to the music, you I don't think you'd realize that it was from uh, any of the Rudy Ray Moore movies until they mentioned like you know the Human Tornado or you yeah, know, it's it's on like, point. All the songs tell you exactly what they're singing about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, even with there, the, the Petey um, Wheatstraw song. <laughs> there was something interesting. There really is a Petey Wheatstraw. Really? Oh. Uh, he was a blues singer back in the 40s. And the only reason I even looked this up is because Rudy Ray Moore on one of the specials that I watched mentions Petey Wheatstraw. And that's where they got the idea to do this character. Because he used to walk around, I guess, and tell people he was the devil's son-in-law as part of like his <laughs> his persona. Um, and he got he got killed in a car accident in thirty nine or forty, uh, drunk driving. You know, him and a couple of guys were out partying, and he, he slammed into a tree. Damn. If I remember correctly, but um, but he didn't come back to life. No, he didn't that we know of. <laughs> Which I was really depressed about when I was reading. I'm like, hey, how did this? Oh, he didn't come back to life. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like he took the um, 
took the premise for that and yeah, went yeah. with it as partially him, partially Rudy Ray Moore as a comedian, only now it's Petey Wheatstraw. Right, um, right. And I thought that this, was interesting. Yeah, this seemed to have a very cohesive beginning, middle, and end. Um, hey, follow it. Yeah. Yes. What's up, Rudy? <laughs> Those club guys, he couldn't take the competition. Let's kill Petey. <laughs> I know. It's like, my God, how much did it cost them, them fat bastards to uh, have a show that night that they had to go in debt to the mafia or whoever, Mr. White? <laughs> couldn't change the date themselves. Mr. White. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So they couldn't change the date. So fuck it. Let's kill, let's kill Petey because uh, yeah. we're not going to get enough people at our, at our, at our, talent show or whatever the fuck it was or instead of just going and hiring like pd Bonneville, like the next uh, night Bonneville comedy act yeah. or something wasn't it? yeah <laughs> yeah it seemed like some variety thing but you're right they could just change the date but nope nope we we owe mr white <laughs> oh, yeah God. yeah the last thing you want to do is start insulting a uh, a mob guy that just loaned you a ton of money <laughs> when you're standing on that was a great scene that was funny um, that was really funny real quick the guy's name mr white just killed me that that was as soon as he calls him mr white i'm just laughing i'm, I'm almost you think crying. he was sending a message yeah <laughs> no no <laughs> i thought it was a good setup in the movie though for um for the little kid to get killed to get shot i mean it's yeah cool but it was a good it was a good setup i mean you saw it coming um now I'm going to get technical. I'm going to get a little technical because I did enjoy the movie. I I do recommend if anybody's a Rudy Ray Moore fan to go see it. But uh, I had a problem with why he was in hell in the first place. I did because he was being trained by some other guy to be a good person, and he'd been yeah. a good person his whole life. He you know he became a comedian to yeah to like help people and make people laugh. But suddenly he gets shot and he's in hell, and I. The only the only thing that I could have saw somehow some way is if he would have made that deal to bring that boy back to life, and that deal yeah, never he, made. Didn't, he didn't even ask about him. No. no, he didn't ask about anybody. He's like, oh well, we're okay. here. Like, oh they're all in hell too. He's I, a bit self centered. Yeah, um, yeah, he wanted vengeance, and that was it. <laughs> yeah. Well, even the devil said, "I just happened upon this scene." He was like, "It wasn't planned out." Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but looks like they were tied in the fact that he was born eight years old, like he had special, you know, yeah. anointingness or something. And I kept waiting for that to all play in, but none of it played in. It's like there's again the problem with the Rudy Ray Moore writing team, whatever it is, <laughs> <laughs> writing guy was he had a lot of really cool ideas that he just left hanging. Yeah. Um, I I, I like the idea of I've always liked the idea of a common man fighting against the devil because the devil's got a soul. Kind of, kind of like, he even mentions it. Uh, the devil Daniel devil Webster. Webster. Yeah. Um, that's a good story. I haven't read it in a long time, but I do remember really enjoying it and seeing how he gets out of the deal. I think they just left a lot on the table <laughs> with this. I mean, once again, but it was, yeah, just a little bit. But it was it was an enjoyable story. I mean, the fact that he's, they, they get gunned down at the funeral. Damn. That's yeah. cold blooded. Those are those are some, as Rudy Ray Moore would say, those are cold blooded motherfuckers. <laughs> you know, damn, that was bad. Yeah, but when he came back, he made that gunman piss his pants. <laughs> oh, he <laughs> shit himself. And too. shit himself. That's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> I would if I thought I killed somebody in the game. <laughs> be like, that's the oh. most in your face poop in your pants I believe yes. I've ever seen in a movie. <laughs> Dude, it was. <laughs> It was it was funny because all the guys are like, "What the hell stinks in here? Go clean yourself up." What about that one guy when he first saw Pete? He was, oh, I know they <laughs> they overdid it. It was great. He just ran. <laughs> it was great. Um, he just ran away. I'm done. <laughs> Did you guys catch all the watermelon jokes throughout the movie? Yes. Oh my God! I it fired off. She of gave them. birth to a melon. <laughs> I guess it went with the old racist motif, like let's play it up here. They I did. That shocked a, me. Have a note about the, uh, the the watermelon truck exploding. And I made a, <laughs> I made a note. Only Rudy Ray Moore could get away with that. Yeah. Because if that would have been in any other movie, somebody would have screamed. I, even back then, I think people would have screamed about it. But it was Rudy Ray Moore, so 
there was so well, many watermelons, watermelons came in that. out of her before he did. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's like, what's this? <laughs> he just sets it aside, just keeps on going. Oh, <laughs> <my> <laughs> so basically, Pete Wheatstraw's twin is a watermelon. <laughs> oh, no. That's so horrible. Rudy Ray Morris. <laughs> there was so much watermelon in this movie. I mean, so there funny. really was. It showed up multiple times. And I was, was really waiting out, for there, a, there again. <laughs> I was waiting for a big payoff for yeah. that. Like you'd think there was going to be this big joke, like somehow he kills the devil with a watermelon or something. <laughs> Nothing. Just it didn't happen. I'm like, okay. Well, when you watch the movie, my name is Doma. You know, when he was pitching his ideas to Ryder, he just throwing stuff to the wall, and the guy's like, oh, that's yeah. not gonna work. <laughs> right. like, so right. He's probably doing the same thing with everybody. Right. <laughs> yeah. So and he was able to get through it. Uh, let me let me just recap the the story a bit here. Um, Petey Wheatstraw in this movie is is a comedian and he gets gunned down at a funeral and ends up in hell and um, seeking vengeance. The devil offers him a deal that he can go back and take care of everything, but he has to marry his daughter, who is <laughs> ugly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she was pretty hideous. Yeah. So he does it. Well, the devil eventually does come to uh cash in and take Petey back to uh hell for the wedding and well <laughs> he well, tried to get out of it. He tried. He almost got out of it. Almost. Um he didn't turn down the bachelor party gift though. Oh god. <laughs> and what I, what is so funny is the aftermath of that. Were they dead? Did he kill them? He had sex with them so hard, they were all dead, right? (laughs) They were either dead or in comas. (laughs) Until that that scene, I honestly thought I was about to watch a Rudy Ray Moore movie with zero nudity. Oh, my God. I said that to Kat when we were sitting there. I was like, I'm so shocked. There's not been one breast yet. I said, I'm so proud of Rudy Ray. And then all of a sudden, they they start panting. There it goes. There you go. You got a lot of it at one time. Yeah, you yeah. just built it all up. Here you go. <laughs> well, his girl, you know, his girl, uh, what was her name? Uh, Nell, Nell never never got any. Every time they no. get rid of have sex, yeah. something happened. Right, right. <laughs> she yeah, the comedy was better here. Too, when the demons come in and the guy, the well, no, it wasn't a demon, it was the hitman with the, with the machete and he's just chopping stuff up. <laughs> She's not even too scared about herself. She's more pissed off that he's breaking her stereo, breaking her table, breaking her chopper. It's like, Petey! <laughs> <laughs> There's something. The demons. Oh my God. Oh, the outfits were like little eight-year-old Halloween costumes. Or yes, yeah. that's what the, the capes yeah. reminded me of, a plastic cape from those uh 70s <laughs> halloween costumes yeah that was and funny. the horns all, most oh, yeah. of the horns look nipples they didn't look real horns yeah, yeah they did. <laughs> they did. the wife mentioned that too she goes what do they got on their heads nipples <laughs> <laughs> they were like little suction cup horns yeah the production value was quite a bit better but they didn't do a good job with it no no not, not all the way that was a weird one with the multicolored uh leotards and uh, and capes. It's that very was a poorly exactly. executed sequence too. It was like not choreographed worth the shit. Oh, no. No, not at all. <laughs> yeah. And when the when those demons come into the to the bar where him and uh, his crew are sitting, yeah. Rudy Ray Moore's expression. Oh, <laughs> it's fucking brilliant. Yeah. It's just spot on. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> you know what? It was. I, I enjoyed it. It was it was over the top in that mm. aspect. Um and I really I really liked the ending a lot. Oh yeah, I liked the yeah. the, the bad end or well, not a like a not a happy ending. Yeah, right. I didn't see it coming that way. I did not well, see if it you, coming. The prologue and begin the movie pretty much tells you he is gonna become the son in law. Yeah. Right. So yeah. I guess it kind of it's foretold true. that it's in a way. True. Yeah. That was a cool little sequence in the front of it. It really shot really well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and she was hideous. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, uh, did you catch who played the part of the devil's daughter? No. It's the same lady they had playing Mel. Was it really? Uh-huh. I missed that. I didn't stick around. I was just around. watching some of the credits to see uh-huh. if I noticed any names, and that and it was Nell and Devil's Daughter, and I just started chuckling. I was like, no kidding. Yeah. That was a good well, they, job. There's a she couple things hideous. in there. Um there's a scene, I don't know where they're at, but there's a poster on the back wall that shows uh, 
who's appearing and Java was one of them who was in the human tornado. And that's right. So, and a lot of the same actors, of course, coming back, Rudy had his oh, crew yeah. mm-hmm. and which is yeah, cool. The, the standby. Did either one of you catch towards the end when they're running down the alley, some of the graffiti? Yes. Little yes. Wayne. Little Wayne. Little Wayne. What the hell? <laughs> and I started laughing. I was like, oh my God, I wonder if that's where he got his name from. It's got to be. I was going to look it up. Because, you know, he rapped. He was on a lot of 90s rap artists' um, yeah. albums because he's the one who kind of invented the whole rap thing. Yeah, they consider right. him like one of the, the stars. Grand, the godfather of rap. Yeah. yeah, they they really, like in the one thing that I saw with him in it where he's like narrating his own like story, they interviewed a lot of rappers. I don't remember whether they interviewed Lil Wayne or not. I don't. But I, I saw that on the wall I and, I, and Kat and I just looked at each other and we just started laughing. We're like, that's got to be where he got his name. I, yeah, I would, like, I would like to find out for sure, but I'm I'm thinking that's got to be it. That was my thought as well when I saw there's like little Wayne. Oh no shit! <laughs> right, right. It's a good little what do they call them? Uh, Easter egg. Easter egg. Yeah. Or watermelon. Well, in that, it was an in your face egg. Easter egg. <laughs> yeah. Just, right. Yeah, it was great big on the side of the wall. <laughs> <laughs> and he got up on that roof with a uh, eight foot step ladder. Yeah. He's the hero. Oh, you know the Dewdrop Inn at the end of the movie where he had to go beat the devil. Yeah, uh, that's where they filmed Dolomite. You know, in real in real life, it was called when he bought the hotel to film oh, Dolomite in. That's right. I kind of caught that because I I watched that oh, damn. too again. I watched several little things just. I to, forgot about that, but you're right. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Damn. Yeah. Just I don't know little... if he kept it. You know, he, he they bought. I don't know if he. Still owned it for the rest of the movies as a production studio or not? He I'm probably assuming, did. I'm assuming he did, or or he rented it at a really good price because that was in a bad neighborhood. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he got, had to get rid of all the winos and crackheads to yeah. film the movies. <laughs> I like when he comes out of the, the, his initial business meeting with the guy that he's actually going to do the show for, and the uh, the crackhead or the heroin addicts and stuff are stripping his car. That's why we can't have nice things in the ghetto. Yeah. <laughs> he goes and chases them down. And they Scooby Doo chased them around the, yes. <laughs> the neighborhood. It was so stupid, but it was so funny. And of course, the guys come out with eggs. Yeah. yeah. Well, they didn't have a click plate glass window. Yeah, that would have been. Yeah. Right yeah. the eggs. It's cheaper. <laughs> yeah, it was a Three Stooges moment for sure. Oh yeah, yeah. You said you just the long pass, the long bomb for jokes was good. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's one thing I enjoyed about this. This was the writing was better. Um, the, the acting was actually up and up. Yeah. yeah, yeah, a little bit, yeah. not a lot, but a little bit. Not a lot. <laughs> not a Rudy lot. Rudy still can't fight. <laughs> <laughs> so now this let's is the let's talk movie about you made right. This is the fourth movie you made. Yeah. Thirty fourth movie. Yeah. Now, I the, trying um, to figure out what what order they came in. So it might have been the fourth movie. I know the tornado was the second one, right? The human yeah. tornado. Yeah. I might have seen that years ago, tornado. but I don't remember it. I, it's, find out. I don't recommend it. <laughs> what was the human tornado? Yeah. I again I think we, we talked about it last week. I think if they would have wrote a straight script yeah. and played it straight like they did Dolan, it would have been fine. It would have yeah. been better. Yeah. Um because the humor was there naturally, just with the stupid stuff they were doing. But I think if they'd have played that movie straight. I think it would have been another Dolomite, which would have been, but purposely funny. You know what I mean? Right. Whereas I think they tried too hard for Human Tornado. Yeah, Whereas one of the got, things. That... They, they almost got the the keeling. Is that what it's called? Whenever you, you equal out the ship. Yeah. yeah. They got it right in the fourth one. <laughs> yeah. 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 They, they, yeah, they, they, they finally yeah, did they get it. They got it pretty well well set in there. Even keel. Yeah. Yeah. So that was a that was pretty good. I enjoyed it. it it's just so much. Why was the guy in the graveyard? What's that? The the wino. Was was he a wino or was he somebody raised from the dead? Because they start kicking dirt on him. I know. It's like, no wonder you're cold. You're you're uncovered. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So I I don't know whether that guy is supposed to be a zombie coming back from the dead. I think it was just a wino. Or if he was a wino because they just started to bury him. (laughs) (laughs) 
Damn. <laughs> <laughs> um, I did. I did find it um, strange that uh, as a young Petey ran into a kung fu master who taught him all the secrets of the universe in about a year. With <laughs> funk, with good funk music in the background. Yeah, <laughs> and they <laughs> they cut up some watermelon. <laughs> he was so decrepit, but. Like in the next scene, he's like agile. Yeah. <laughs> like, I like a Yoda. Yeah. <laughs> like so Yoda. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> but mm. there again, they, they had that guy, that character. And initially, I was trying to figure out now, was that supposed to be the devil? But why would the devil tell him to be a good person his whole life? See, none of that paid off. They were just. Whatever stuck to the wall, they wrote down. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't know why was. that was there. It was weird. Um, yeah, because you would think that his his upbringing, or that I was kind of expecting that guy to come back in as an angel and say, "No, you're not allowed to have him." That's yeah, or do something, help him, or something. And nothing. There was nothing. I was like, "Well, why was that guy even introduced?" <laughs> because Rudy said, "I want a kung fu master." <laughs> You're right. You, you both are right. It just stuck to the wall. Yep. Rudy said Motherfucker. <laughs> With funk music in the background. And yep. sure hey, Rudy, this makes no sense. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> you rat soup eating motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> That's my favorite insult. It comes up in oh. every damn movie. <laughs> God, it's funny. You know what, what? What was it? What was the insult, motherfucker? Or just you rat you soup eating motherfucker? So and so, motherfucker. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Rudy, man, he could probably insult you for twenty minutes and not repeat himself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that could seem to be his thing. Yeah, he well, he toured the comp- country, right? Uh, yeah. Doing his dirty um, yeah, he, insult he comedy like a, routines. Yeah, he was like a dirtier version of Don Rickles. Yeah, you know. <laughs> they said uh, I watched the interview on uh, something. They said uh, Eddie Murphy held dolomite parties and they invited people over. They watched all his movies together. Oh, no, oh my God. Yeah. Oh, that would be great. Yeah, so that's why he decided that. to make this other movie. You know, my name is Dolomite. And he did yeah. great oh, in that. Yeah. Yeah. Watch, watching the Dolomite Rudy Ray Moore movies and mm-hmm. then seeing Eddie Murphy portray him as like, man, he, he nailed it. He had yeah, he, a huge fan. Yeah. He made his dreams come through, which is great. I mean, they're not the. They're not, you know, Oscar movies, but he right. made it happen himself almost, you know. Right. He did. Yeah. Like just yeah. sheer force of will. Looks yeah, like he's I a little will. more fit in this movie, just a little bit. Yeah, yeah, you know, it looked like he dropped a few pounds, started maybe working out. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm gonna show my butt again. I gotta <laughs> yeah. I gotta do some oh, spots Lord. or something. <laughs> yeah, I will always Stay praise I'll always praise Rudy for for this. Like like David said, he yeah, he, he made his dreams come true. He um, and we talked about this every time we do one of his movies or anybody mm-hmm. like him. Say what you will, he made the yeah. damn movie and he made it happen. And here we are, many many years later, watching yeah, still it, talking about it, and talking yeah. about it. Yeah, not ju- not just talking about him, but in a lot of respects, I, I'm praising the guy. And yeah, yeah. The, you two are both praising him too. Like this guy yeah. had a dream, he saw a vision, and he went and he did it. Like. You can't do that, Rudy. No? Are you sure? Watch, I feel me, like motherfucker. I can do that. Watch like, me, motherfucker. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like I can, but just keep going this way. I'm going to be okay. No? He okay. Was, <laughs> yeah, he was sick of failings. He's I'm, yeah. I'm going to do this no matter yeah. what. Yeah. And how much stuff, like in that one movie, in the uh, they call him the Dolomite movie, how many things did his auntie go through? You tried <laughs> to be a dancer. You tried to be a, 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 ra- a, a scatter. <laughs> She <laughs> tried to be that. You tried nothing. Like he's working at a record store. Yeah. A record but store. Snoop Dogg is the yeah. uh, record store <laughs> DJ. Yeah, that was funny. Yeah, I'll play a record. <laughs> I like it. Later in the movie, he, he gets famous and he, hey, will you play, will you play my, my soundtrack? And he played that one song he gave at the beginning of the movie, refused yeah, to play. Yeah. <laughs> and Rudy's just standing there shaking his head. Rudy Tootie Toot. Toot. Like, what was it? Rudy Toot Toot. <laughs> yeah, something like What's funny is when you hear him sing, he doesn't have a horrible voice. Right. When, no. he, when he's singing, he doesn't have a horrible voice. If he would have done blues, if he'd have actually just been a blues man, he probably would have been really famous. That, that's my thinking because he's got that that tenor for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That really raspy yeah. voice too. Yeah, he, I think he could have done like it. Like really Helen well. Wolf. 
Thank you. Holland Wolf is like one of my absolute favorite blues singers. And the funny thing about him is I always thought, I just always assumed that he lived like in bad neighborhoods and that's, you know, that was his life and that's where he came from. Well, he didn't come from a horrible background, number one. Number two, when he got money, he took his kids out of whatever bad neighborhood he was in and moved to a really nice neighborhood and would take them on vacations, you know, the, the typical American right. upbringing. And his daughter yeah. was talking about it one time. She's like, well, my father would leave for a weekend or whatever, but he was always there. And other blues players would be getting drunk and, you know, oh, man, this is what life is. This is what the blues is. And he'd look at him and go, no, that's not what the blues is. That's you totally missed what the blues <laughs> are all about and what they can do for you. You know, <laughs> and there was a movie crazy. with him in it. Uh, Calac Records, I believe it, uh -huh. it. It told the story of Muddy Waters, uh, little little Walker, Walter mm -hmm. and um, Helen Wolf. And uh -huh. they kind of shown how they interacted and Helen Wolf and Muddy Waters hate each other. Oh, but really? I didn't know that. In the movie, they hate each other. Oh, that's amazing. In real life. So, but they're in the same, uh, it was like Chess Records, I believe they're all yeah. on. Chess Records. Yeah. Big Chicago. Big Chicago group. So we're going to have to put that in the queue then. <laughs> Do what? Said so we'll have to put that in the queue. Oh, yeah. I, Holland Wolf. Blues is always in my queue. Blues and any big band. Yeah. I mean, I, I discovered a, uh, another singer called uh, Blossom Geary. Hmm. I had never heard of her. She just happened to pop up on Pandora one time. So I went and looked her up and found her on Spotify. I was like, holy crap, she's just got this really nice, lilty voice. I was like, shit, I wish I would have discovered her 30 years ago. You're right. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that all people who made a dream, who yeah. looked at something, I'm sure, I'm sure she was told, no, you'll never make it. And she's like, oh, yeah, watch. Yeah. Colin Wolf. Oh, yeah, yeah. watch. <clears throat> watch me. Well, that's what's, what's good about, uh, and we've done this for several filmmakers, that we reviewed is um yeah we can tear apart what they did mm -hmm. but man if you look and see the heart and the the drive and the uh, what they put they put themselves in, out there mm -hmm. and said fuck it all i'm doing it and did yeah. it and that's yeah. that's that's an inspiration for anybody and that's and a big thing i saw they interviewed rudy Ray Moore. he hates the term black exploitation it, he felt like it kind of they finally got roles beyond maids and butlers, and they're trying to put you down now. You know, well, black exploitation. I kind of, I kind that of term was put out by, by guys like uh, Al Sharpton. Yeah. And and, and the, the black leadership that basically proclaimed themselves to be the leaders, and it was because they were the, these actors, and this wasn't beholden to them. They they didn't believe the crap that they were being told. They went out and did it. Because you watch some of the old um, documentaries on black exploitation, and the actors and actresses were really mad at these guys when that term started being thrown around. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and it was what started in their own community with the people who wanted to control them, but they wouldn't be controlled, is what it boils down to. And it's really telling whenever you see some of these older actors talking. Like, thank God for Pam Greer, because oh, yeah. nothing kept her down. No. You know? Thank God bless Pam it. Greer every day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we started our podcast with um Pam Greer. Coffee. Yeah, coffee. Yeah. I never saw I never watched before. coffee. I need to go back and watch it. You have to watch coffee. Coffee, coffee is great. Coffee is a good movie, yeah. Yeah. It's I think it's her first big movie, isn't it? I think so. If I remember correctly. And I coffee see, is really good. I want to see a few more of her movies. There's a bunch of her stuff yeah. on, on Amazon Prime and all that. So yeah, I wanna I want to watch a bunch of her stuff because she's just you can believe she can knock a guy out if she punches. Oh yeah. You know? She can fight. She's a she's a bigger lass. I mean she's... yeah. They paid for choreographers in her movies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Rudy said, like, we're gonna fight. <laughs> I don't know karate, but I'm a no choreographer. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, did you ever play fight when you were a kid, Rudy? <laughs> Because I learned Kung Fu last week, and we're good to go. Yeah, <laughs> we're good. We're right. good. <laughs> yeah, I was watching some really bad Kung Fu movies on, uh, on Netflix the other night, like uh, 36, 36 Chambers, uh, Shao, the Shaolin, oh, yeah. or something like that, and then the Five Venoms and the Five Ninja. And 
I'm just watching these movies and I'm just chuckling. I'm like, oh my God, this, I love these movies. I just absolutely love them. But if anybody actually tried to fight like that, they'd have the living hell beat out of them by a guy like yeah. Lee, like in two seconds. These guys yeah. fight for 10 minutes straight, beating the hell out of each other. And they're like, just a couple scratches, you know? Yeah. Fine. I like when they get a big sword gash across yeah. their chest. They're like, ah! Uh, <laughs> and they come back like, no, I man. the first two blows. I'm dead. I'm gone. Yeah, that's it. Then, you know, no, no, this is yours. This this power ring is all yours. I'm going to just go over this way. <laughs> just stop it, me. All right. Hey, have, you, have you guys watched the movie that they made to kind of do an homage to the black exploitation in and it's a comedy called Black Dynamite? Yes. I have not seen it's, it yet. That is I, hilarious. Dynamite is just, and the funny they thing take is all I that stuff on, in one movie, all the little weird stuff in all the other movies, it's, it's hilarious. And the funny thing is, I had it on one time and I was watching it. Oh. Yes, Black Dynamite is hysterical. <laughs> right. But I didn't realize that it was an homage. There we go. Yeah. Let me get a little my little pimp hat in there. I'm a little funny. <laughs> But I, I didn't realize that it was like an homage, that it was like a comedy. Like I just had it on in the background. And then he somebody says something and I and I started watching, I started paying attention. I was like, did they just and I started watching, I'm like, oh my God, this isn't serious. This is a comedy. No. <laughs> I didn't realize it. <laughs> it's so hilarious. It 15 minutes into the movie because it was just in the background. And then I started watching it. I love the spear where the guy gets hit by, by the spear. Who didn't see that coming? I mean, who did anybody see where that came from? <laughs> <laughs> My favorite scene is they're they're fighting, and the guy actually slaps the actor by accident. He goes, "Son of a bitch!" And then all of a sudden, it, it clips, and it's different guy all together. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> all right, I definitely have to watch this. <laughs> it's hilarious. There, there's so much homage to to Rudy Ray Moore, especially because they interviewed um and Shaft. They kind of Mix Shaft and yeah. Dolomite together. Yeah, yeah. The, the the actor, I can't think of his name, but he's in the the Falcon. Oh yeah, he 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 was the guy that the, on the Dark Knight the Joker killed with a pencil. Yeah, yeah. And he, he was in Spawn. He, he was Spawn. He was Spawn. Yeah. I can't um, remember his name. Let me. I got the remember his name right here. Guy to death. <laughs> but he they did like an interview with him, and he's talking about Dolomite and Shaft and all the all the movies that he grew up watching as a kid. And he said there was so much to love about him, but there's also so much to make fun of. So that's what he did. <laughs> and that was his <laughs> idea. And it, it just shows that he loved that movie so yeah. much. And he loved the genre, and you can tell. Yeah. So, Dave, we'll start with you. Yes. Final thoughts. I like it. Um, there's, like I said, there's holes in the plot, and there's holes in the script. But all in all, just a few. Probably, yeah, just a little one. But all in all, it's it's a fun watch. It's you know not as many breaths. Well, there is as many breaths, but they're all at once. All and real quick, scene, <laughs> real quick, and you're gone. Uh, it wasn't the typical Rudy Ray Moore movie where there's breaths all the way through it for no apparent reason. Um, somebody must have looked at him and said, "Rudy, enough, okay? You can't can't find we need a movie anymore." But uh, yeah, it's it's worth a watch, I think. If you like Rudy Ray Moore, if you like old black exploitation, if you like something that's just funny and silly, yeah, I would highly recommend it. Yes. David. Yep, it was really fun. Um, um, my girlfriend watched with me. She thought it was hilarious. Nice. Dude, dude. <laughs> I really enjoyed it. It was really funny. Like uh, even the bad kung fu and the poor acting. Oh, another thing. I love the fact that the... Uh, the devil was trotting when he was jogging. He was such a proper devil, drinking yes, milk. Yes, that's, yes. My, that's my favorite part. I believe the In devil. His track suit. I can't believe I forgot about that. Yeah, he prances when he's jogging. Yeah. That's it's hilarious. Funny, I forgot. That is funny. And he's in a red, the red sweatsuit. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's and, funny. Uh, and next time you're fighting the devil, don't break the staff. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> You knew that Don't was break a bad idea. <laughs> yeah. This was not a typical Rudy Ray Moore movie. Um, this was not Dolomite. It was um had a pretty good script. Mm -hmm. It was better, better acted. Uh I could follow it. Yeah. Minus a few plot yeah. holes. It was very enjoyable. And I love the twisted ending where no matter how hard he tried, his ass yeah. was going to hell. <laughs> yes, that's right. No matter what. It's like 
Don't know why, because they never explained why he was going to hell. Just no, but you know what? Just because. Yeah, just because. because One too many really, watermelon jokes. Because they wrote it down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't care. I want a motherfucking movie, so it's gonna be in there. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's gonna wrap us up for today on old ass movie reviews. Next week, we are going to try and make it through Blackenstein. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'd like to think this one. I don't think I can watch that one. Right. <laughs> I'd like to thank David Carroll for uh, joining us today. I uh, appreciate you coming on, man. Really enjoyed having you. And uh, until next week, later. 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 later.